obviously a, a disappointing loss. Um, we did not go out there and execute like we are capable of and like we needed to in order to beat a very good two-lane football team. That's a, a tough one because we had every opportunity and we knew it's a team that we certainly could not only compete with but also beat. Um, credit to them. They did an excellent job. Um, and what I told the team in the locker room after the game is that you know, all 120 guys in there, every coach, every member of the staff, starting with me, wasn't good enough. It wasn't, it wasn't what we needed in order to win the football game. And we've all got to be better. The easy thing is to place blame. The easy thing is to make excuses. The easy thing is to point fingers. Uh, but all we know is to go back and work and find ways to win a football game and to improve. Because if we keep going back to the drawing board and saying, okay, hey, this is what we get. We're fine. We can just do it. No. We, we got to find ways to, to come out faster. Uh, and all three phases play four quarters of football like we are capable of. We knew that if we turned the football over in this game, we wouldn't give ourselves a chance because it's a, a very good team. We turned the ball over twice. I believe we had three dropped interceptions. And we continue to show that we are capable, but we haven't put it together for four quarters. And that's my job to figure that out. We are four and two. Um, not happy with that because we certainly have the ability to be 5-1 and one right now. The season's not over. One game will not define us, whether it was a win or a loss. Um, we've got to find ways, though, to come out and come out swinging. UAB is a very good opponent playing on the road. Um, it's another conference game. But we've got to find ways to get better, and we'll look at all those things that we've got to do and uh, you know, continue into conference play. All of our hopes, goals, and dreams are still in front of us. Uh, we're going to take it one day at a time and one game at a time. We'll learn a lot from this, uh, good, bad, and ugly. And we're going to uh, move on and, and get our focus on how do we improve ourselves and then focus on UAB. Ryan, was Blake Watson hurt, or was there a reason he didn't play after the third quarter? Yeah, you know, we, obviously our run game was ineffective. Let's call it what it is. Our, our run game as a whole was ineffective. Uh, we had to plan to play um, Brandon Thomas, you know, some of this, this game. Uh, and then we know that what Sutton was able to do. Um, you know, just kind of where we were in the game. Um, you know, Blake may have been a little bit chipped up, and I just, you know, sometimes you get a feel. You look at your guys and, and, and say, okay, do we need to make a sub there? Um, I don't think it mattered who our running back was. We were pretty ineffective. Obviously, Sutton broke off some decent runs on some mid zone concepts when he needed to, but uh, ineffectiveness all along. We'll, we'll evaluate every single one of our guys. Um, obviously, Blake's still a, a, a very good running back. Uh, but we got full faith in, in Sutton Smith and Brandon Thomas as well. Hey, it's the second time, uh, second straight game where you ended the first half strong, but the start, the offense didn't get going. What are you seeing and, and why that is? Yeah, if I had that, I, I wish I had that answer. Um, and you're right, exactly right. Uh, it's just not, you know, the energy's there, uh, the, the eyes are there, the understanding. It's not like we went out there and had a bunch of missed assignments. Uh, we're just not executing. You know, and part of our keys to victory going into this game were, you know, we talked about attention to detail, owning the football, and winning our one on ones. And really, for that first, and let, uh, let's call it what it is, both games, you know, our two previous games, uh, we didn't handle what we need to in the first 20 minutes on offense. Um, and so we got to look at, okay, is there something we can do a little bit differently? You know, it was scripting plays, um, maybe preparing for different defenses we're seeing. You know, all of the above. And, but that's part of our job as coaches to find a way. Because, you know, all of a sudden, if first UAB, we start off fast and then don't finish, it's, oh, wait, that reminds you of the team last year. So um, we'll, we'll explore that. Uh, obviously, we do. Um, and, you know, it's inexcusable. We've got to find ways to start faster on offense. And, and really, in all three phases, play more consistent. Um, I, did, I told our team we didn't have to go out there and dominate in any phase. We just had to go out there and execute and, and handle our business. and. This is what our team, the ebbs and flows of our football team um, in, the, in all three phases. And obviously, we started off slow. Uh, and we'll continue to explore that. And, and hopefully, Frank, we can, I can have that answer for you, you know, next Saturday afternoon and say, OK, hey, we, we got it figured out. But that's our job to continue to look into that and see what we can do. In the second half, you go up 21-10, and then they kind of take back control of the game. What was it then that, that switched up and kind of had the, the 21 nothing run going? Yeah. I mean, College football, obviously, we, I believe we had to turn the ball over. You, know, you go into that game, uh, like I said before, you can't turn the ball over against a good two lane. Um.
desperate and manageable and couldn't get off the field. And so, you know, we've got to find ways. Obviously, uh, they've got a fantastic team um, and that, you know, we weren't able to stop them there. And then offensively, you know, some self-inflicted wounds as well, you know, and uh, playing a really good team, you can't do that. You've got to go out there and be dialed in on, and click on all cylinders. And, you know, for whatever reason, I'm sure Joe and I will look at a play and I'll say, hey, this play may have been one of the old linemen. The next play, this play, you know, may have been one of the wide receivers. Then this play may have been a quarterback. And then defensively, we may say the same thing. Hey, this guy's got to stay in his gap, or we had a missed tackle here. Um, and so th those are the things we got to piece together. we got to be really good at them throughout the week in order for them to show up better on a Friday night or a Saturday. Um, and, you know, the thing is, you, you sit there and you say, okay, wow, we've got, man, at, time, at times we look like, Billy B Conference champs right there. Like I don't think anybody sat there. You're exactly right. The, the way we, the, the, the unnecessary roughness, that's inexcusable. Um, that is not us. I'm very, very, very disappointed in the individual that did it. Uh, he will be handled appropriately, and that's not us. So my apologies to our fans. My apologies to Tulane for that BS move on our part, and we will get that fixed. There's no room for that in college football. There's no room for that in the Memphis program. Anybody that's been around me and understands that that is not what we believe in, and uh, that makes me sick to my stomach more than, you know, the loss, obviously, but then to, to see something like that occur, uh, I apologize and we'll make sure that, that that's, there's no room for that in our program. Coach, talk about how the offensive line did tonight. Yeah, you know, uh, inconsistent. Inconsistent, right? We knew that Tulane had a very good uh, defensive line, and I think that, you know, there's times they looked pretty decent and showed some decent protection, and then times we got beat on an inside pass rush move. Uh, times that you know one guy wasn't able to sustain a block in the run game. Anytime you're not able to run the football, um, that that always starts up front. And so, uh, I think the O line, the, the five guys that played tonight, would be the first to not even close to our standard uh, and the expectation of what we need up front. And uh, they'll be the you know some of the first to sit there and say, okay, that that falls on our shoulders. And uh, and that's why I at least appreciate about that group that they're going to find ways to go back and and dig deeper and find ways to improve, but not good enough effort. Coach, with the platform you guys played on the ESPN, with the crowd being hyped for the game on Friday night, do you feel like you got that kind of missed opportunity to kind of, kind of, kind of get the wave going, keep the thing momentum going that season? Yeah, first off, the crowd was phenomenal. Um, I appreciate everybody showing up. It's you know, the best crowd of the year. And uh, the students, once again, were great. 
and the, the, the crowd was into it and, and supportive, and they did a fantastic job. Um, no, you know, you know how you get the crowd back again? Find a way to win the next two games because they'll show up because they, they bleed blue. They love their Tigers, um, their players. The Memphis football program will continue to fight and, and find a way to come back victorious. And, you know, we're going to encourage the fans to keep believing. Four and two, uh, it's not the end of the world because obviously we one game at a time, but we hope to come back home six and two and a chance to continue to improve upon the season. But um, we're grateful for our fan support. We're going to encourage them to continue to stick with us and encourage them to make the drive over to Birmingham and be there for us um, in another conference game, I guess, as we used to say in Memphis, the Battle of the Bones. Um, but for me, it's the next game, and it's the most important one of the season. When you talk about the hopes, goals, and dreams still being in front of you, is it tough to not think big picture about this might have been the one ball game you guys probably have to run the table the rest of the way to get there and focus on one game at a time instead? Uh, you know, I've always truly, in my heart of hearts, I've always, the way college football has gone, it is a one game at a time thought process, and that's all I can ever think about. We knew the magnitude of this game. You know, we understood, like Devin said, yeah, it was on ESPN and a chance to showcase, um, and we didn't get it done. But that's not going to affect how we prepare for UAB. It's not going to affect our approach. Um, we've got to be better, regardless of that is. And so we can all we can do is, you know, focus one game at a time and say, okay, what's the next step? And that's what I appreciate about our players and the guys in that locker room. They'll, they'll go back and they'll say, okay, good. This game wasn't what we needed to do. Let's learn from this. UAB is the next game. We can't think beyond that. We can't. It's great to think big picture, but man, every week is a season of its own. So our guys are going to be, I know they're going to learn from this game and then come Sunday at 3.30 in the afternoon, their focus is going to be on UAB and what do we need to do to win that game? And then guess what? Find a way to whatever it takes for that week and then the next week and then the next week and one game at a time. And all we can do is hope when it's all said and done, the dust settles. We like where our record's at, and it gives us a chance to compete for a championship. Um, we know winning conference games is as important as anything, but, man, for us to think anything outside of um, learning from this one and the, the focus on the next opponent, uh, it would be an injustice and a, and a disservice to our, our own team and our program, and that's a great thing to do to get better, Coach. And, uh, and that's, that's what gives me hope and belief, because I've told you guys that their eyes have been Phenomenal. I, I tell you guys at every press conference, and it sounds like coach speak and corniness, but we'll improve from this. We'll find a way to continue to get work. Hey, coach, you, you went down 10, then you went up, scored 21 points. Why weren't you able to maintain that momentum through the end? Yeah, it's we didn't execute. Lack of execution, obviously. You, know, you kind of mentioned the, the foolish penalty by ourselves, not being able to get off the field, not being able to make plays. Um, you know, inability, like I said, I think, you know, and I'll, I'll watch the film tonight, you know, was it? What was it on this play, right? Was it uh, a D lineman on this play? Was it a right guard on this play? Was it the linebacker on this play? You know, so I think we're going to look and say, okay, just lack of execution by everybody, and it's our job as coaches to put them in the right situations. Like I said, I always look back and see what we can do. But you know, when it was all said and done, we just didn't didn't execute. And um, I think that's the the common thing, right? When you win a game, man, the guys were clicking. We were able to find ways to execute, um, but. We've got to do it more consistently, and I know that's a word I've been using. Um, and, and find ways, you know, the ebbs and flows of football games. Obviously, you always want to be able to finish a game the right way, and tonight we did not. I apologize if this is the last right. I went too late, but uh, Blake Watson wasn't playing there towards the second half. Was, his, was it injury-related? Yeah, you know, one, like I, I mentioned earlier, Mark, we did not – we weren't running the ball effectively. Um, and so, yeah. And, we had had plans to play Sutton a little bit more and Brandon Thomas, uh, you know, who, who's a name you guys hadn't heard in a while. Uh, we know he's an effective running back. And, you know, Blake may, you know, it was kind of, I just wanted to make sure we were fully dialed in. But uh, like all of our guys, right? I mean, every guy's chipped up at this point. Um, and, you know, we still got great faith in him. We got great faith in Sutton and all those guys. But, uh, you know, we'll evaluate it. All the guys will be checking in tomorrow to make sure they're all okay. They had a lot of time possession in the first half. Do you, do you feel like the defense kind of wore down in the second half later in the game, or was it just execution? Yeah, it was execution. We can't 
we'll, we will not use the excuse of being worn down. I mean, we, we rotate enough guys that we should go be able, go out there and be able to do it. Um, you know, but the, the the ability, the inability to get off the field on third downs, I think, Jonah, ultimately that one that was what led to the time of possession difference. And then also, you know, not be able to get, get those stops we knew because third and nine, right? Third and 12, you know, third and five. Um, and I think we're, we're going to look back and say, man, that was the difference is lack of conversions by our offense on third downs and then defensively not be able to get off the field. Yeah, absolutely. I, I still believe in college football, right? You, you got to be able to stop the run to win a football game. Um, you know, Tulane was able to hit some shots on us. And it's that fine balance, right? You can play some man coverage. You can play some what I call one high defense in order to get the extra defender in the box to stop the run. Uh, we just got to continue to be cleaner at our tackles. We've got to dominate the line of scrimmage and all those things we weren't able to do. Um, so we'll evaluate and say, OK, um, one, do we have the best personnel on the field in order to to be play effective defense too. We're putting our guys in the right calls defensively in order to, to handle the run or the pass. I mean, you can't you load the box every time, then they're going to take shots on us. Um, and then we, we talked about it all week is winning our one-on-one -on -one matchups. And I think there's times where we said, okay, we're going to line up to stop the run, and then all of a sudden you see us get beat in a one-on-one -on -one matchup um, at DB, and you know, or not getting home in a pass rush. Right? If you're rushing five, you got to get home, and I think that they go hand in hand. And so um, we'll evaluate everything. Um, look, I'm very, very, very disappointed. I'm sick to my stomach. Not good enough. Um, but we're not going to have a sky is falling approach and scrap our offense, defense, and special teams because we're capable. We've just got to find ways to do it for four quarters. Thanks, Ryan.